Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Today we're going to look at first, last, six in arrays one in the sense of Java implementation. Uh, just a couple little notes as we start into this section is I'm going to be doing strings one and arrays one, lists one at the same time. Um, the reason why is I really want to highlight how strings and lists are very similar. Um, also, you'll hear me jump between the word array and list. Um, they are different and it's important to kind of highlight that, but in this situation, we don't need to be very specific in language. It should be right in this situation, anytime I'm working with Java, I'm talking about arrays, and anytime I'm working with Python, I'm talking about lists. So if I slip back and forth, um, I apologize. All right, given an array of ints, return true if six appears as either the first or last element in the array. The array will be length one or more. So in this case, we have a six as the last element, so we return true. We have a six as the first element, so we return true. And we do not have a six as the first or the last element, so we return false. So this question is, is a really straightforward um, conditional statement. We're just going to check if the first element is a six or the last element is a six. And wrong language. <laughs> and what I want to make sure we walk away with is an understanding of length and indexes, which are exactly the same as in strings. So nums is equal to that. We see that this has one, two, three, four, five elements. So those are indexes zero, one, two, three, four. Exactly the same as a string in terms of length and indexes. So usually when students are first learning how to do this, um, I'll often encourage them to do this, is to make an integer called whatever and store the length of the list or the array, there I go, inside of it. So I'm going to say nums.length. The reason why it's good to do this is it just cleans up your code a little bit, especially when you're starting to write longer, longer, more complex problems, um, and especially when you're starting first learning learning about this. Okay, so we're going to say if, and I'm going to say nums at zero is equivalent to six, or nums at, and now the last index is always going to be the length minus one, if that's equivalent to six. And if either of them are six, we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. And I can hit go. And I forgot my semicolon. There it is. Go. And there you go. Okay. Um, since this is a really quick video, let's just clean this up and one line it. And also, I really want to highlight this line here. The array will be length one or more. It's really important when you start working with arrays um, and strings is to understand the, the length because that's going to impact what kind of error checking you have to do. So in this case, I don't have to check. This will always be fine. If, 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 if the length could be zero, I would have to actually do a length check before I check that index zero. All right, so I can clean this up first. You know, I can get rid of those braces because this one line of code associated with an if statement, no problem. Now, as students get a little better and more comfortable with this, um, they tend to do this instead. So they just actually do the function call, or not a function call, they just access the, the field for length. And that works. And the last thing we can do is if you look at this, you'll recognize that this is a conditional statement. And if it evaluates to true, you return true. And if it evaluates to false, we return false. Therefore, I can simply write this as a single line return statement and just return the evaluation of that Boolean statement. And there it is. I hope this helps. And if you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.